nurses in us who we are coming in, we are in solidarity with the striking nurses. Zimbabwe can't be open for business when it's closed for health. Yay! A good afternoon to you, our viewers, and thank you so much for making us the station of your choice. My name is Zerim Bonyinkadzino, right here on The Shift, where we discuss all things about women empowerment and women participation. Today in the studio, I'm joined by two young ladies who are going to help us understand the effectiveness of women empowerment in Zimbabwe, in Africa, and the world at large. I'm joined by Anna Sande, who is contesting for a post of a Secretary General at the University of Zimbabwe, SRC. I'm also joined by uh, Tali Masara, who was the Programs Manager for Tali, and I'd like to welcome you to the program. Thank you so much. So as we start, I'm going to start with you, Anna. Just briefly tell us, who is Anna? Anna Sande is a young female sociologist in the making at the University of Zimbabwe. Uh, I'm in my second year. I'm very much passionate about women empowerment, women issues, and I'm a student leader. Uh, that's all I can say for now. Thank you so much for joining us and over to you, Tariru. Okay, so Tariru Masara is a young woman who is passionate about um, women's issues. Uh, I'm an expert in gender and development and currently I'm the programs manager at Tegel Life International. Mm -hmm. uh, you have something in common, you have all, you have all uh, spoken about women empowerment. Maybe before we go to women empowerment, just briefly tell us, I understand that you are contesting for an SG post. Tell us your journey into student activism. All right, my journey uh, started uh, when I was young, I, I always took up leadership positions. I, at Form 3, I was senior prefect. At A-level, I was head girl. I, I just love uh, dealing with students and making, a, making the students' voice count uh, everywhere. So when I got to university, um, it was also my top priority and uh, through my experiences as a student, uh, there are some issues that happened to me and then I only wish that if only I had a voice, maybe I could have made an impact in these one, two, three issues. Maybe I could have made a change. And then uh, that's when I joined uh, Zinasu, which is a very powerful and influential union at the University of Zimbabwe. But then that wasn't enough. Um, when I saw, uh, I, I, I was trained by Tegel Life International under the LEMS training, uh, where you are groomed as a leader. So that is where I now got the guts now, because it's not really an easy option to get into, and it's a very difficult space to penetrate, especially as a young woman. So. I got the training, uh, a leadership training under the leadership economic and mentorship hubs. Uh, that is where I was equipped with tools of confidence, bravery, and um, trying to understand um, your position as a student and what uh, exactly you can do uh, in order to deal with issues that affect students. Mm -hmm. Anna is uh, talking about the leadership training that you offer. How effective has it been uh, working with young people Okay, thank you so much. So just to give a brief background of Otege Life International. So Otege Life International is a girls and women's rights organization uh, that is uh, operating in Zimbabwe to advance the rights of women and girls. Our vision is to, to, to see a safe world for women and girls where they are empowered to dream and to become whatever they want to be, where they are able to make um, social and economic choices freely. And how do we do we create this? We do this uh, through, through creating... Um, to, through giving them a voice, um, body ownership and agency for them to claim their rights. And um, one of the programs that we are running, that we are currently ra running, and it has been running since 2018, is the Leadership Economic uh, Mentorship Hubs. That is where we are targeting adolescent girls and young women from the ages of 16 to 24, where uh, Anna Sande was, uh, was part of the 2020 and 2021 class. Uh, so this leadership, uh, this LEMS, we call it the LEMS program, is where 
where it has three, strate three stages. So the first stage is when we enroll them for the training, which is a 14 days, uh, 14 days training in leadership covering different topics. So these girls will have to choose a, a specific topic of interest. For example, one might be interested in sexual and reproductive health. Maybe someone is interested in gender-based violence, be it education, be it leadership, be it environment and climate, be it information uh, communication technologies. It all depends with their interest. So we train them and we groom them. Groom the, them through the 14 uh, day uh, training. So uh, the second stage now is where Anna is right now, where we'll be doing the youth uh, engaging local leaders. That's where through the themes that they've chosen, for example, Anna has chosen uh, leadership in politics. That's where they then get into their, their communities, start to advance the agenda and initiate the change that they want to see. So as we, uh, as we can see, this is one of the outcomes of the leadership program where we have got young girls who are raising up in their communities and claim leadership and be change makers, initiating the change that we all want to see. Mm -hmm. Anna, you spoke about some of the challenges that happened in your life that uh, then contributed you to be part of student activism. Do you care to share some of the challenges that you faced? All right. Um, as, as, as I am um, contesting to be the Secretary General, um, one of the major things that I've learned in leadership is that you have to be a good listener. You have to use your ears to listen to the problems that... Um, uh, the other students are raising and also um, being a mouthpiece. So talking about experiences, there are a lot of challenges that um, not only myself is, uh, is facing but what the, what, uh, the students as a whole are facing. Right now we have issues of uh, communication problems. Um, we are trying by all means um, that this coming SRSC will improve the communication systems between the SRSC themselves and the students before we even go to the admin. So there is um, communication challenges because one of the key things that I know is that when the students vote for you, they're entrusting you with their voice too, so that it counts. So then you don't have to be as a leader to ignore their their voice. You don't have to ignore their concerns. So um, if I'm trying by all means to be a good listener, uh, being able to communicate with the students and not try to ignore them. And then uh, total representation of the students' issues in the council uh, to the admin blog. Um, the the reason why we are having the SRC and the reason why we have secretary generals is because we need representation and it starts with you becoming the representation that you want uh, in the council and then we also have um, problems uh, to do with the transport situation we have we are not not all of the students uh, at the at the at the institution are from Harare so. Uh, there's need also to make sure that students get safe, uh, affordable, and uh, quality transport services, uh, even those living in the in the in the communities. And then we also have issues to do with uh, inclusion of students living with uh, dis disabilities. Uh, it's very alarming that at this point in time we are ignoring such students. Um, we must, uh, by all means, to have uh, representation of students living with uh, dis disabilities in the SRC. We must have a, represent a, repre a, a representative from the DSRC. Uh, right now, it, it, it is alarming that we have uh, notices all over the campus uh, talking about COVID-19 awareness, but it's, it's funny that we do not have such notices that reach out to the students with DSRC. Why, why do we not have uh, notices written in Braille? so that they can also, uh, they are able also to access uh, the, the, that same uh, information. And how do you intend to change such a system, uh, looking at how other SRG, S, S, SGs were part of, um, of uh, SRSC, there was a Biola, there was, you know, all those uh, people who were in the SRSC. How do you intend to change that yourself? Uh, myself, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a student activist. I love the students and I'm here for the students. And that is one of the things that I'm here for. That is one of the things that I want, uh, a change that I want. Why do we not uh, have gender uh, equality in the SRC? Is it not a cliche that everyone who wants to be voted for would say, I'm different, I'm going to do that? Um, 
it 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 it, it comes back to to the background like i said i was influenced like i did not get um uh like a privileged background to say uh, so some of the 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 policies and some of the things that happen on campus they hit uh the the the, the let me say a general student just a, a mere student so i relate mostly to these issues that i'm mentioning right now so it's 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 it it be, it, it's, it it gets to my heart that i would definitely push for those things uh to 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 make a change mm -hmm. and uh Tariro, how do you see um women empowerment in zimbabwe generally do you see uh, young women uh, particularly being empowered how do you see the women empowerment programs in zimbabwe are they effective and what have you done uh, as an organization in empowering more women to get into politics, like to train them like uh, you did to Anna? Okay, uh, so generally in Zimbabwe, we can say we are doing well because uh, Zimbabwe has ratified so many international and regional instruments that we have domesticated to make them our own laws and our own policies. But... Um, from my own experience, it looks like there is a gap between uh, the policy on paper and implementation. But for us, uh, speaking on behalf of Tege Life International, what we are doing is to t uh, implement some of the for some of the policies. Take for instance, we have got the uh, Domestic Violence Act, which most women might not know. So it becomes our responsibility to then educate them. For example, during this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, reports, for example, from Musasa showed that there's been a spike in, in, in GBV cases during the COVID-19 lockdowns. And as an organization, we took it upon ourselves to then train these young women to be frontline defenders, whereby what, what is happening in their community that relates to gender-based violence they then uh, um, share with their fellows and we have a, uh, a hotline where then they would um, call send messages and we would refer them for post GBV services and whenever they would need psychosocial support it was also our responsibility as an organization to 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 offer psychosocial support so that example alone shows that we are also playing a critical role in empowering those young women to understand this law which might be hiding from them for example in the communities they might not even have access to the constitution they might even they might not even know that there is this law or this policy that is there to protect them. So it then becomes our responsibility as an organization to break down that law or that policy, share with these young women, and then they become frontline defenders in their communities, thereby initiating the change that we are also looking forward to. Mm -hmm. And uh, Anne, how do you distinguish uh, student activism and national politics? Uh, Thank you so much for that question. It's very critical in this moment that we have a conversation around that because the students themselves do not have, um, some of them are hesitating to choose student leaders because in the end they want to exercise political, uh, national politics. In that regard, if you are focusing on the students, if you are coming to the students and asking the students to entrust you with their vote, it means they want you to push forward their agenda. So um, I am a student activist. Uh, of course, their national uh, the national politics, of course, might have influence on the students, but that is not um, a case that is more important than the students' case. So we need first to deal with the problems that are facing the students. First, the agenda of the students. How far are we pushing the struggle of the students first? That's, that's how I feel about it. And would you say that ZANAS is aligned to the MTC alliance? Or the course is aligned to, to ZANU -PF? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to take it in that place, but for the benefit of those who have uh, uh, a confusion around that, um, according to, to what is there on the table right now, most of the um, leaders in the MDC alliance or that are participating in national politics, some of them are, were groomed in the, in, in the Zinasu, uh, acting as a student uh, activist. So some of them, it's not a problem if you want to pursue uh, national politics, and then if it's not even a problem if you are groomed in Zikosu or, or Zinasu. So sometimes it's about where you are trained. Like myself, I was trained under Take a Life International. So it's just it's just the background <laughs> mm -hmm. and having said that many people 
think that politics or student activism is not a safe space for women. How do you comment on that? Exactly. Um, there are issues around that. I, I think it's one of the issues that we have to, do, to address is young women uh, in leadership and all the stakeholders that support women leadership. Uh, trying to sensitize the political environment for just to make it safer for the girl child so that we have more female participation in, in politics. Um, uh, recently, Funny enough, uh, violence erupted at campus uh, during our campaigns. One of my, some of my posters were torn apart, and some of my campaign managers we 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 were beaten up by a certain uh, union, uh, it happens. And then that kind of act actually uh, discourages women from participating uh, in politics. But I believe that we can make a change, we can make a difference. Uh, what I can say right now is that um, political, in di political difference uh, must not get along uh, victimizing women because it, violence is violence. And what I, what I understand is that uh, most women it's not just the students, even nationally, most uh, women uh, who are in politics, uh, they suffer violence, sometimes physically, it's shocking. And then when we need to protect our girl child, we need to protect uh, young women who want to pursue politics. It's a safe space, but we need more, more actions, more policies to protect our young women. It happens and it's still happening. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back and this is The Shift. Today we're having a discussion with Anna and Tariro. And as we um, went for a break, we were discussing about uh, student activism and uh, national politics violence, which can be an obstacle to men participating in politics. Estali, do you have uh, a training on how they should go about it? Let's take for example how she was sharing with us that some of her posters were, were torn apart. What do you have? Uh, I understand that you said you offer a political uh, training. What do you have as study? Okay, so um, basically it's leadership training. Then someone then gets to choose what kind of leadership they want to pursue. For example, she then chose politics. Uh, uh, but from what I mentioned earlier on, that uh, our vision is to see a safe world for women and girls. And our mission how we are going to achieve that is through um, creating safe spaces for them. How do we do that? We ensure that they have a voice, body agency, I mean body ownership, and then agency to claim their own rights. So during the, the trainings that we have with them, they are equipped with such skills to have a voice. For instance, you are becoming a victim of, 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 of violence on campus. You have to have a voice. You have to know where you should go to get the help that you need because there are there are a lot of, 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 of facilities or services that you can get for protection. So we are responsible of ensuring that they are empowered enough to claim their voice. We talked about uh, body ownership. It's, it's one of the challenges that they face as, as women in politics. Sometimes they are even sexually harassed, physically harassed. So they, they have the skills to ensure that they have control over their bodies. <coughs> and then talk about agency. You have to be assertive enough to understand that, okay, I'm not becoming a victim. So you have to be assertive to then seek the, the help that you need so that you are protected. Because truly speaking, um, politics is not as as safe as we think it is. It's, it's quite risky, but we ensure that the girls are equipped with enough skills to protect themselves and to have that voice that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about women empowerment as well, uh, just recently um, the bill, the act, the amendment act number two, uh, extended the quota system. Do you think that this really empowers young women to also get into politics? Um, I think it, the quota system does empower them, but for me, I would want to focus more on, on, on grassroots politics, which is where we are right now. Because if we want to talk about the quota system where we are saying we have a gap uh, for women in parliament, we need to understand why we have that gap. 
you realize that even in grassroots politics, we don't have more women. So if we don't have more women participating in, in grassroots politics, how then do you expect to have them, to have more women in parliament? That's when you realize that even those women who are getting there through the quota system, they're then given nicknames. When they try to speak in parliament, they are then bullied. But if we empower those women from grassroots level, it means we won't even have challenges of having them, uh, of having a quota in, in parliament. <coughs> but generally, what I can say is, in, in a way, it's a way also to empower them to, to increase the numbers in parliament. But I wouldn't want it to be more of numbers, but to be more of quality. If we have young women who have been groomed from grassroots politics, let's say Anna Sande here, she's been groomed to participate in grassroots politics. We, it means if we have got maybe a hundred of these then we are not worried about a quota in parliament because we are already represented and we have got women who are articulate on issues that they are representing. Mm -hmm. And how do you see the quota system yourself? Yes. Because definitely one day you are going to get into national politics. You would want to contest for a, seat in, uh, for a member of parliament seat. I'm impressed though by the quota system. Uh, it, it's good. It's a good initiative. But I would want to say that uh, just having the quota system is not enough. We need implementation, we need uh, support financially because it's not enough to just say uh, women should, should, should take up leadership positions but then the, the supporting systems are lacking. We really need financial support as female leaders. We need um, moral support just to boost confidence in, 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 in women. We need these trainings, more of these trainings where women are, are trained in leadership. Uh, that is uh, how we create the agency to take part in, in, in this initiative because sometimes we can say uh, there is the, there's, there's a quota system, women are uh, now encouraged to participate but then women do not show up. Like for example, right now, uh, in, the, in the previous SRC, we only had two females um, amongst 10 seats. One, of course, it was the president. We love her, Abiona. She represented as well as, uh, is, uh, from a gender perspective. We are very proud of her. And then we also have um, Honorable Tari Rotawodzera. She's also an alumni from Take a Life International. Uh, so, um, like we have eight, we have uh, eight seats in the council um, of the secretary generals, but we only had one female and then and seven guys secretary generals. You can imagine the gender the, the gender gap. Mm -hmm. uh, and some about. people have said that uh, women are labelled different names because they want to participate in politics. Some are labelled to be loose. Some having blessers because they get into student activism. How do you comment on this? It's a it's a it's a societal delusion. It also comes back to to the cultural uh, perspective that uh, culturally uh, women some some some, uh, but I do not want to take it as a um, as a culture that is our own because we were not like this like the black women were powerful. We took up leadership uh, positions, but then I want to say that uh, due to the coming in of uh, colonization and all the the position of women was strategically uh, lowered. Uh, but then uh, it also comes into say most uh, people, but we are getting there do not believe in female leadership the reason do I women believe in female leadership as well of course we do there are some women who believe in women leadership but there are challenges like uh we were mentioning before there are challenges how best can we try to make uh the political environment or the leadership environment safe for women who would like to take up leadership that is how we, because sometimes you want to create a space but how conducive is it how protective is it how supportive is it so that is what we we come here for so uh it, like uh, for this uh for this um SRC elections, we are proud we are getting there. We have like female, th three female representatives um, who would like to campaign as secretary generals. The rest are men. Why did you settle for secretary general and not president? Um, <laughs> as for me, um, I'm comfortable with being the secretary general. I'm you think to be president is for men? No. So no, why not, why not, not being not a president all. and then a contest as a as an SG? Um, <laughs> well, it's not it's not a difficult role. 
but then I think I'm just comfortable with being. Why would you be comfortable but, but, for a lesser not, position? But, no, it's not. It's not a lesser position because we are proud that uh, last uh, the the previous Senate Takakwiza uh, Madam Abiona Matarayi. And why not Pukiza of Tiana this time? The next time. I'm going to make sure that there is a female representative as a <laughs> president. <laughs> we were discussing about uh, gender-based violence, which is one of the prominent issues that affect women and young women. How have you helped in uh, advocating for the rights of women in terms of gender-based violence? Okay, so um, as Tegi Life International, we are part of the Women's Coalition of Zimbabwe where we are also advancing the agenda in the framing of different policies and, and acts that has to protect women against, against gender-based violence. And then as an organization, like I mentioned earlier on, we have um, a, a hotline where we ensure that uh, any other young girl or young woman whom we have reached with uh, information on gender-based violence, whenever they are faced with a challenge, they then get in touch with us and um, you know, gender-based violence services, they are, they are quite different. It depends with the kind of need that one has. But basically, we then offer psychosocial support. And uh, we ensure that we also refer for, uh, for post-GBV services. So basically, that's what we have been doing as Tegel Life International in response to gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. And there are cases uh, of uh, the MDC trio, um, Joanna Mamombe, Cecilia Chimbiri, and Netsai Maroa. How do you see that as, as, as Tegel Life International? Okay, so um, you know the thing with these issues is um, the moment as a non-governmental organization, you want to to relate to those issues. It looks like you are becoming political, but just commenting on on on, on a personal level, violence is violence. Despite you are MDC, despite you are an PF, despite you are independent, violence is just violence. So we just advocate for a safe world where women and girls are just free from violence. Mm -hmm. And. And are you not afraid when you hear cases of Takudwa being arrested is Zinasu and you, you are also contesting as Zinasu? Are you not afraid to be in such environment? Um, one of the qualities of a leader is bravery. It's not an it's not a, it's not it's not an easy it's not an easy task uh, becoming a leader. Of course, even your family. There are insecurities around uh, any gender just taking up leadership, especially along the political lines. But right now we are talking about student activism. And one of the mantras that I've been uh, running with is that we are trying to gain total academic freedom. If you are a student, if you are a student, you have to be, you have to enjoy your rights as a student. That is freedom of expression, freedom of raising your concerns, uh, being able to air out your views, uh, your pleasures and your displeasures. If you are having any challenges, you are able to uh, to express them uh, in the best way possible. So we are talking about student activism. Students have to be free. Ac total academic freedom. I believe that it is achievable. That is if we make this environment safe for female students and male students altogether. Mm -hmm. And you talk about total academic freedom. There are people who have said that there are a lot of uh, violations uh, in the academic space. They've talking, spoken about a tie for a mark. Are these things happening at the university? Exactly. Exactly. We have issues to do with sexual harassment. We have issues to do with gender-based violence. We have issues to do with rape. Or physical violence against the students and sometimes it's lack of uh, appropriate policing and implementation uh, we are trying by all means to make sure that the sexual harassment policies how far are they being uh, implemented and if there is a sexual harassment poli uh, policy uh, why is it that we still have the tie for a mark in the in the lecture room why is still the lecture still pursuing female students uh, these are the issues that we're dealing with uh, recently 
uh, issues to do with menstrual health. Like I had a friend of mine, she called me and I said, ah, we ran out of electricity, the whole campus is dark, I can't even go, I can't even go to the bathroom because my, my phone ran out of battery. We are talking about a female student here. Maybe she's on her maintenance, she wants to go and take a shower and then the whole, the whole hostel is dark. Why can we not talk about alternative power systems? Why don't we have, like, if electricity cuts out or we have electricity problems, we might not have generators, but we still have to access lighting. We need lights in our, in our, in our hostels uh, so that the student cannot go in the dark. And then you can imagine when the, when the, when the hostels go dark, what happens? Mm -hmm. A lot of things, thief, thieves can just sneak in, you can lose property, a lot of violation can actually happen. So we are trying by all means to make sure that our learning environment is safe for the, for the female students and also for the male students, for everyone, the, the teaching staff and everyone. What do you promise to do as Anna, if they vote for you to be an SG? We, you spoke about a Thai for a mark in lecture rooms. What are you going to do differently? What are you going to advocate for? I'm just happy that uh, I have a background also of a, of a peer educator. And one of these issues to do with uh, gender-based, uh, uh, sexual and reproductive health and rights is, is my area. I can deal with that. Uh, we can How are you going to deal with that? Okay. So number one is that we're going to, to create channels. For example, myself, I'm going to make sure that uh, I... I have a good relationship with the class reps. I might not know everyone on campus, but I can manage to have uh, a, a, a representation in every classroom. Like I can have, I can work with uh, class representative, uh, class representatives. So if you have your issue, you can approach your class rep, and then your uh, your class rep can easily uh, talk to me. And then if we have issues of agency, I can be on the ground because some of these issues is about knowing exactly what is happening, knowing the policies, knowing even the rights that you have. So I you think that women uh, can be able to open up to a class rep. Let's say her rights are being violated by a certain lecturer. Would she be open to go to a lecturer and to a classroom and say, uh, lecturer so and so wants a tie for a mark? All right, I'm just happy you asked that. Uh, classrooms, <coughs> uh, it's not a position for guys alone. We can have two female, it's just about having representation of uh, maybe I can say a peer educator in every classroom whom you can up go and approach and talk about issues to do with issues that are uh, related to sexual and reproductive health and rights violations we can do that and then we can also raise awareness like campaigns knowing like letting the students know what their rights are what are some of the entitlements that they have and also the reporting channels and then if you have dislocations uh, in when it comes to reporting the reporting channels that is where now we have to take action and when we mean action we mean action what is action? <laughs> action is holding the, the perpetrators of violence into a, a, accountable. We have a good relationship with the, uh, we have uh, lawyers to support us, uh, we have the police to support us. So sometimes it's, it's about uh, bringing the evidence to the people that so and so committed uh, this kind of an offense and this is where we are and this is what happens as, a, as an example that this is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, Tali, you are a strong advocate for menstrual health and one of the topical issues in Zimbabwe is period poverty. How do you work with um, maybe adults 16 to 24 years because they are still in the gap that they really uh, face some of these challenges? Yeah, true. It has been a challenge. I think we are reading it everywhere. And also even when you're interacting with the, with the girls, uh, it's, it's happening. They, they, can, they can relate to it. So uh, one of the things, like I mentioned, the Leadership Economic and Empowerment Program, um, we, are make sure, we are ensuring that we empower the girls with life skills 
or the skills that they may need to cope with our environment, with our economic environment. For example, uh, recently we were having this uh, t citizen journalism training with the girls. I saw a lot of girls who are selling things, who are doing things. For example, these this things that you put in your the Shambhala thing. Exactly. She was selling those things at $2. That's how we are empowering them to be economically independent so that they can access sanitary way. But you realize that uh, not everyone is, is, is economically empowered to have access to sanitary way. So we have other alternatives, the traditional way of doing things, where our mothers would use those, those things, uh, those clothes. But you have to also encourage them about menstrual hygiene to say, if you have to use this thing, you have to wash it, you have to make sure that it's, it's, it's well aerated so that you don't have infections. But we still have a very big gap whereby as an organization, we're not able to cover the gap where really there is period poverty amongst our girls and young women. So what we are doing really is to lobby uh, uh, the, the, the uh, Parliament Portfolio Committee on Health to ensure that at least there is easy access to, 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 to sanitary way, whether it's, it's cheap or it's affordable, it's accessible to any other girl in the community. It's quite a big challenge and we have a long way in ensuring that every girl has access to a decent period and we have alleviated the spirit of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And as we close, kindly... Uh talk to that young lady who's still home and thinks i cannot be a leader what word would you give them okay what i can say is uh come out of your shell you are precious you are beautiful there is power within you but that power can only be ignited if you all if only you choose to stand up you can shine and feel free to reach out to Tegi Life International. We are located in Belgravia, Mount Pleasant, but we have got quite a number of um, young women in your communities, within your communities, where you can reach out to them. And then you can as well uh, come to our offices and we can give you the knowledge, the skills that you need to be an empowered young woman who is more than able to make informed decisions and choices without fear, but with boldness and courage. Mm -hmm. And SG Anna. They are university students listening to you. Why should they vote for you? Number one, let's vote for change. Let's try by all means to cover the gender gap. We need female representation in the SRC. There is no better candidate who can represent women issues uh, despite the women themselves. We have the voice. Sometimes we don't need men to talk about menstrual hygiene. Uh, not because we are ignorant, but let the females lead because we also can lead. Uh, Abiona Mataranyeka proved that women can, and that is, <laughs> that is why we are here. Mm -hmm. So uh, let us vote for change uh, and try by all means to uh, exercise our right as the students. Uh, academic freedom is, atta is attainable, that is, if we want it and we can fight for it you and we can win them. it's not for me it's not just about winning if even if i do not win i will always stick to my goals i will always be a student leader and i will always be a student activist so let us choose for leaders who believe in student activism i am here for the student and i'll always be here for the students Thank you so much, Tariro and Anna, for joining us in this episode of The Shift as we're talking about women participation and women empowerment. And indeed, the, it's not about being the future is female, but now is the future for women leadership and women empowerment. I'm Rimbo Nyikadzino, and have a good afternoon.